Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit. I'm now delighted to be joined by Sinead Bovel, who's a futurist and founder of New York-based Way. Good to have you. Thanks for having me. So first of all, tell us what is a futurist and what is Way? All right, so a futurist, I mean, sometimes it can mean different things to different people, but for me, uh, I analyze quantitative and qualitative data, usually pertaining to emerging technologies, but societal trends, geopolitical trends, et cetera, and then use that to build forecasts about where the future may be headed. And then sometimes I'll advise private companies, sometimes more public organizations, uh, so they can start to prepare for anything that could be in the pipeline. Well, so really predict, not predicting, but analyzing the future. So. Um, what does that fit into the dialogue we're having here at this AI for Good Summit? Right, so I think uh, what we're seeing with technology is it's becoming the base layer through which everything gets built and on top of. Uh, and so if you really want to safeguard technology while also ushering in innovation, you have to have an idea for what the pipeline of that technology looks like. Uh, and to, I think the only way to do that is to look further out into the future uh, and to try to understand the different directions things may evolve. So give me some real case examples of where, say, say, private sector have asked you as a futurist and using AI what, the, what you've managed to not predict but analyze and to come out into a reality. Oh, there's been, I mean, a few different things. Uh, so a few years ago, for example, I, I wrote and published some work on the potential for automation and fashion modeling as an industry that many people didn't really see coming. Uh, and then in this past year, we've seen a bunch of new startups uh, focused on automating fashion models in particular. Uh, so that's one example, so to speak. Um, the ethics of avatars is something that I, I bring a lot of attention to. Uh, in kind of pre-metaverse days, we weren't really thinking about avatars. Uh, and then along comes this, this new world of where we kind of interact entirely digitally and understanding who's behind those images or behind that persona online and what that can mean for things like safety. You said twice in this short interview, nobody will escape from AI. There's no profession that can say, okay, AI is there, but we're okay. We don't have to worry about that. Yes, I think, um, I mean, if you, and that's not necessarily something that's new. Uh, over the past 80 years, 85% of the jobs that exist weren't, didn't exist at all about 80 years ago. So although it seems in the present that every job being disrupted by AI, it might seem overwhelming, that's nothing new in terms of technological evolution uh, and how emerging technologies do disrupt. I think it just feels a little bit different because this is the first time a technology is really coming for more so white collar jobs. Uh, and so that's why I think it's kind of sounding alarm bells and, and you know, si signaling a few, you know, some people aren't, aren't aware or, or familiar with that. You worked a lot also with AI and youth mm -hmm. and underprivileged kids, I guess, in particular. Tell me a bit about that. Yes, yeah, so I think when you look at the future, and if we know that technology, especially artificial intelligence, is going to be the base layer everything gets built on top of, if young people don't have access to these technologies and if they don't know how to use them safely, uh, we run the risk of an entire generation who's essentially locked out from the economy. Uh, and that's something very concerning. And one of the, the sessions that I'm moderating here this week uh, is specifically on the opportunities for youth in the world of AI. And why I'm particularly interested in that is to hear young people's perspective as to where they see the opportunities in this technology. Uh, we often hear it from the private sector or the companies building these technologies uh, or even kind of higher up leaders and decision makers. But where do young people actually see the pathway to prosperity? What are the problems that they want to solve and see this technology as a, as a perfect fit for? Uh, and so in terms of my capacity also as a Generation Connect Visionaries board member, when we look at our, our future with artificial intelligence, it's not just that people can't access the economy or access these tools uh, in terms of physical infrastructure or hardware. Sometimes it's digital skills. There are cultural components uh, that challenge that. Uh, so that's all of the different kind of ways I, I would approach bridging that AI digital divide. Fantastic. Have a great session as well on that. Thanks for having me. So that's Sinead Bovel, futurist, talking here at the AI for Good Global Summit.